Welcome back to Alma, Missouri for episode three with me, Mr. Silly P. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween to all of you out there. I know it's saying August in game, but it's Halloween everywhere. I also say in the UK, but it's not all over the place. Um, and we've got a nightmare ahead of us. I thought we'd do something Halloween-y. Is that a word? Oh, probably not. Um, I'll show you the nightmare in a moment. We are kind of carrying on from the previous episode. We're a little bit further ahead time-wise. I have picked myself up a toolbox. A Schultz modding tool toolbox. We're going to whiz out to the store because we do have, I said in the live stream, we have got some contracts. Third sizing contract which pays out really nicely. We're going to need the money from that because we've got some stuff we need to buy. I am going to be buying a skid steer loader. I have looked at all different options, skid steer loaders, telehandlers, wheel loaders. There's a lovely case wheel load that I used on Griffin that I was going to use. Um, and... I mean, yeah, it's lovely. I, I really like it. But it's a little bit expensive for the money we've got at the moment. So I'm going to get a skid steer loader to start us off because we're going to need... I need to load bales. We're going to need to get a, a trailer. Uh, we're going to lease a fertiliser spreader. I bought the fertiliser in the previous episode. Um, and, yeah, do some Halloween stuff. I think we're going to put some pumpkins around the house. But, oh, yeah, that was nothing we're going to do. But I might do that in the morning. Depends how dark it gets. Um, we're going to put in some of the greenhouses, maybe a couple of the greenhouses, um, because the greenhouses we can do pumpkin. So it just fits. It all fits really nicely. So uh, Almageddon begins here. It's like that. So may just think of that. <laughs> anyway, heading out. Let's get the lights on. I just went on there, didn't I, and had a look at the contract and then didn't look at where it was. Um, so we'll have to check that in a moment. So Halloween. Where does it come from? It's a bit of a... What's the word? Um, corporate event now, the, these days, I guess, really. Um, it's been around over a thousand years, apparently, in one form or another. It started off as a Celtic tradition, I think, uh, known as... I made some notes. What was it? Sam Samhain? Samhain? Samhain, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, I do apologise. And it used to be celebrated on November the 1st. Well, not, no, actually, no, Samhain was celebrated on November the 1st. Um, and it was believed that on that day, uh, souls of the dead would return to their homes. So people would dress up in costumes, lit bonfires to ward off spirits. That was kind of the, the premise behind it, apparently. Um, so in, the, in sort of that light, things like witches, ghosts, goblins, they became associated with the holidays, that kind of thing. Um, so the church then had a thing called All Saints Day, which used to be celebrated in May. They changed that to November the 1st. I think Pope, it was one of the Pope Gregories. Don't know which Pope Gregory it was. I just wrote down Pope Gregory. I just keep thinking there was, what was that advert? Um, Pope Gregory the 9th. It wasn't Pope Gregory the Ninth, but it could have been. Anyway, round to sorry. Um, oh, I've just realised I've left those on. How very remiss of me. Turn those off. There we go. Uh, actually, we'll go around to the store. What time is it? Ten to seven. They're not shut yet. Uh, we're going to get ourselves a fertiliser spreader. Like I said, I've already got that. Nice and cheap. We're not going to go mad. I mean, there's a few different options. 
and I've said before, I've been trying to um, use different stuff, but again, I do tend to fall back on things that I, I like and work well. So I sort of installed a few different bits and bobs. I was looking at that, the Lizard AC2, and um, and then there's the PS1004 there. The capacities aren't very big, but they're nice and cheap, which is, is quite handy. Um, and then this one that I used on... Griff... No, Edgewater? Might have been Edgewater. I'm trying to think. That works really well, the 6 tonne. That's an 82 Studio. Starts off at a 6,000 litre. And to lease that, it's nice and cheap. So I can get that entire pallet into that. Ah, oh, saying that. Will it do it from the side? It might do. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I might just leave it exactly like that. We'll lease that for 622. So what we'll make on the, on the actual contract will be fine. Like I said, I want to pick up a skid steel loader. I want to pick up a flatbed trailer. The flatbed, um, I've used a few different ones on Frontier and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and use something different on that. Uh, we're going to get a skid steel loader over to the farm because we've got a ton of bales to pick up. So what we'll do is the fertilizing job, get the skid steel loader, get a low loader. Um, we'll get those over to the farm. I'll put the pumpkins and stuff out and then we'll start doing the bales, picking the bales up. I've already done the baling. I know people were concerned that I was going to spend ages on an episode just baling again. I've done a lot of baling recently, so I've done the baling off camera. It's all done, but the bales are all out and I've got nothing to collect them with. I did say about switching one of the tractors over, see if I could put it into the store and um, put a front loader on it, which I absolutely could. I, there's no reason at all why I couldn't do that, but I personally prefer to have a separate piece of equipment to do that kind of stuff that way it doesn't you use up usable vehicles does that make sense usable vehicles so where were we at fertilizing build 24 which is where field oh there you go right there oh it's a fairly big field uh we might need to get some more fertilizer i'll strap the road that's all right so we're gonna get that done the be calls on anyway so carrying on what i was saying so yeah um so it was then the the church moved it over um so it kind of overlapped on top of samhain um so the night before was celebrated and became kind of known as it was known as all hallows eve and then sort of halloween that kind of tradition sort of switched over it was mainly celebrated um in ireland scotland across the uk france um where else was it celebrated I'm sure I wrote something else down for that. Anyway, regardless, and it spread to other parts of the world. The funny thing about it is, when you see it now, sort of on telly and stuff like that, it's a much bigger celebration in the United States, um, with a lot of um, Irish and Scottish people moving out to the US, um, taking a lot of the those sort of, not rituals, that's the wrong word, um, but sort of the elements of Halloween celebrations with them. And then it's kind of sort of developed. And it, it's it's not ceased to be a religious holiday, because for some people it still is, and it's still celebrated in that way. Um, although when people tend to celebrate that sort of thing now, they're deemed to be witches and this devil worship. And it's, it's not, it's just, you know... It, oh, maybe for some people it is, I don't know. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, do I? Um, especially if that's your jam. Ah. Oh. This is going to be interesting then, because we've got a crop in the field. I wasn't expecting that. I thought we'd be fair to like, ah, oh, um, that's going to be interesting. I can't remember what the spread width is on this. Oh, I didn't change it. I think it's only 15 metres. I meant to separate it and do the 24. Let's turn it on and see how far that goes out. Well, this is going to take a while, isn't it? It's actually using any at all. I mean, it's going down, just not as... I thought it was going to go down way quicker than that. Oh, we'll take that. So what I'm going to have to keep doing is coming onto here, going across to... That. Oh, blimey, it's big, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dearie me. Um, yeah, so it's it's more of a it's a it's a corporate thing now, isn't it? You know the whole thing about sweets, um, 
I'm sure there was a thing it used to be called guising which I suppose is like disguise you know um, it's an old world tradition Irish and Scottish thing of guising you would dress in a costume tell a joke uh, recite a poem perform a trick do something like that for a piece of fruit or, or some sort of other treat which obviously then over time has then progressed onto you know just bags of sweets and kids going out with buckets of sweets and stuff like that and, um I don't know if anyone saw my pictures yesterday. I, I posted, because I often get this thing over the weekend. Um, if I don't post a video, or sometimes I'll post a video Saturday, not Sunday. I try to take one day off in the week, at least. Um, and then people may say, oh, I know you haven't put videos up. So it's only been one day. Um, I posted videos Saturday and Sunday. The mod reviews from Friday, because there was a lot of mods and it took a long time. And then I did two map tours on Sunday. So yesterday, I had every intention of making videos yesterday. Um, <laughs> but I had a bit of a problem and I said a little while ago that I'd had a, a thing where I'd, I'd blocked the chimney when I when I put the logs into the wood burner and I, I filled the man cave with smoke um, yesterday I came out lit the log burner the wood stove um, and rather than it draw straight out the chimney it just blew smoke straight out the front it just it was horrendous because I'd lit it at that point so I was trying to put it out, so I closed the door, I was trying to dampen it down, closed all the vents, so it would, it would put it out. But the problem was at that point, the chimney had already started to warm up. Man cave was full of smoke, it was absolutely horrendous. Um, it was that point I realised, because I only, like I said, up until when I, this became my studio, I only come out here every now and again, and um, I realised that I, th I think the chimney was blocked somewhere up the chimney. Hang on one second, just a second. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so the, I, I suddenly thought, oh, well, what if the chimney's blocked? You know, I, I couldn't... I thought, I mean, obviously over time I haven't cleaned the chimney out since I got it. But I would only come out here and, and have the, the wood burn on every now and again. So I can't, it can't be blocked, surely, you know. So then I realised I had nothing to clean it out with. I, I didn't have, I had no... Um, brushes no wire brush nothing long enough that I could fit through the pipes I looked online there was a guy that actually did his where he took the whole chimney down and he got some holly branches tied string around them and, and pulled the holly branch through the pipe it was a very clever idea actually he pulled the holly branch through the pipe and I thought by the time I go out go to the woods locally get a holly branch and do all that and I thought you know what I'm better off doing I'm going to have to go down to the local hardware store um, B&Q see if I can find some stuff. I looked online and the various different ones I found were for main like house chimneys which were huge and it's only I think it's a 60 mil 60 mil chimney on the wood burner because it's a tent stove predominantly and um, I found a couple of companies that could deliver brush and cleaning kits in a week one was three or four days I was like, I can't wait that long. So I got up today and it was still freezing cold. I need that wood burner on to come out and make videos. So um, then I had to go, so I went down to b &Q. It was horrendous. Our b &Q is halved in size. It used to be a massive place. And it's um, the other half of it has been bought out by a company called The Range. Um, I had a look around and I was really struggling to find anything. I found a, a, little, a little wire brush, but it wouldn't fit down, the, obviously, the chimney, the pipes. Um... And then I found in the cleaning products section, which was essentially like a bottle brush, um, there was one that was on a handle, but there was one that was about a metre long. It was very peculiar. And, I, and why it was, I say why it was in the cleaning stuff, um, I don't know what it would have been for, really. It was, a, it was a peculiar thing, just nylon bristles. It wasn't a wire brush or anything like that. I thought, you know what, it'll have to do. I'll, I'll have to get back. And So I took the chimney down, took it all apart. Turned out, whilst it had... Um, there was a lot of soot inside, and I'd probably lost maybe a centimetre inside. So I think the, the draft had gone down from 60 mil to about 50 mil, probably inside. So there was a lot of soot and stuff built up inside, which I had to clean out, which was fine. I mean, that was. But what the big problem was at the top, I've got a spark arrester because it's designed to go on a tent. So the spark arrester is supposed to stop sparks flying out and hitting the tent and it catching fire or burning holes in it, that kind of thing. Um, and the spark arrester is just a mesh. It's like a, a diamond shaped mesh um, and I've got a little mushroom top on it to stop rain getting in when it rains the entire mesh was clogged up with soot and ash and stuff it was blocked 
um, I think there was one or two tiny little triangles of the mesh that were left. So what had happened was over a period of time, it was working fine and it obviously just finally clogged up. Something I'd, I'd burnt had gone up and blocked them all. Um, and then yesterday when I went to light it, it wouldn't draw because it was completely blocked. Um, so that took me quite a while of yesterday to get all that done. And then we didn't get any mods. And by that point I was like, mm, you know what? I'll take today as a day off, although it wasn't a day off because I was doing all that. And um, yeah, it was it was interesting. So note to self, every now and again, get up on the step ladder on the side of the man cave, check the spark arrest and make sure the vents are clear. Um, and then I think probably once a year, because I've, I've built the man cave, it's probably three, four years old now. Um, I think once a year, get the chimney apart, get that cleaned out. Um, maybe every six months or maybe just after the winter I think it's one of those things because I'll only need to have it on in the winter right have we gone all the way around we are all the way around the outside so this is going to take me a bit more time now so I'll see you I'm just thinking it's going to be quite dark isn't it I don't have to get back and get the pumpkins done now and then I'll come back out and finish this off because otherwise yeah we won't get the pumpkins on it's starting to get dark now anyway isn't it how we're looking Turn the beacons off. I think we might. I need to come over a similar sort of distance now, probably about to here, I guess. Let's try from there. Swing around, see if I've got that distance about right. We'll head up from about there. How are we looking? Probably come over a little bit further, actually. It's difficult because the further in you get, I can't see the side of the field. Yeah, I need to come over, definitely. Yeah, I'll see you over at the, the, the house in a minute. And we'll get the uh, get some pumpkins out. Why not? I've got a local grower that supplied... Well, a couple of local growers that have supplied me. Uh, we've got um, Sevi. Sevi and... Um, who's the other one? Oh, Rowley Christie. Sevi and Rowley Christie have supplied us with some pumpkins. I've uh, got two different packs. Links in this, or not links, details in the description. I can turn that off now because I know where that is. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put some around the house, I reckon. Maybe a couple down by the main thing. So when people, if the people are driving past, if people are, oh, it must be a lot harder to do this sort of thing if you are out in rural areas. I suppose people go into the main town, don't they? You, you would do Halloween stuff up the, up the town. I mean, like I said, I don't know, I don't live in the US. Um... I suppose if you live way, way out, unless people are going to come all the way out to do drum I don't know. So I'm going to put a couple here, I think, at the main entrance and put some around the house. And we'll see what it looks like. Um, once you've got them, these you'll find under uh, decoration and others, I think. We've got a whole load here to choose from. Some really cool ones, one with the tongue sticking out. So I'm going to do some decorating and I'll show you that in just a moment. I think what we're going to have to do is I'm going to get the fertilising done, we'll get paid for it, and then in the morning we'll sort out, I think, getting the skids to load, getting the bales in off the field, um, and then um, the greenhouse situation, because I'm not sure if the greenhouses just take water. Actually, I could check that, check that now, couldn't I? If we go to production, go to our greenhouses, and we want Alma, Missouri. I think we're going to go for large. They do pumpkins. Yeah, it's just water. That's all right. We can do that. We're going to lease or buy a water container. Um, we'll put a couple of those in. Get some pumpkins growing. Why not? I know they won't be ready for, obviously, this season round. But we can sell them in the town and that kind of thing. We can do our other stuff as well. But I think doing some pumpkins would be quite cool. So we'll get that sorted in the morning when it's a little bit lighter. Let's get these pumpkins in. There we go. A couple out by the road. So if anyone does come up. I've lit the side up down here as well. I must admit, while I was in um, our local supermarket the other day, I was looking at the pumpkins. I haven't carved a pumpkin in years. And I was looking at them, and um, these were... I mean, the smaller ones were not cheap. I cannot imagine a pumpkin that size and what it would cost. <laughs> It'd be terrifying. Um, I mean, these weren't cheap, to be fair, if you look at what we spent. Put a couple up on the... I mean, to be fair, these are probably... You probably shouldn't do that. Um, have things with candles in. And probably shouldn't have that heat on the bonnet of the pickup either. But you know what? 
Oh god, it sells a little look. Oh. Ooh, spooky. Anyway, I just thought it might be quite nice to do a bit of that. And before anyone says, it's not farming, come on, it's a big part of culture. There are pumpkin farms all over the place and people really go into this in a big way. So uh, anyway, that's that done. We've got that lit up. Uh, now what I've got to do now is uh, get back up to the field, get the fertilising done. So I'll probably see you in the morning now. I might see later on what I'll do. We'll come when we get it done and it's a little bit darker, we'll come back. Because these will be glowing a lot better once it's properly dark. Actually, while we're here, I'll whiz over and show you just the field because the, the sun... We have a bit of light behind. Um, did I show you at the start? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Um, of me finishing off that baling contract that I had. I'll show you what bales we had left over. Uh, where did I put them? Oh, the side of this building here. That was all the hay bales we had left from that contract. That's mad. So we've got all those hay bales. We've got silage in the clamp, which I haven't covered yet because I need a skid steer loader, because I need a bucket or something to push that up so I can cover it, but we'll get that covered. We've got the alfalfa silage bales, which I've only done a few of. So I did the alfalfa hay, that's all now been baled and we've got a field of those. If we can find another one. Uh, as I say, I had a field of those. There we go. And then the, the um, field that we swathed. Oh, I wanted to talk about the swathing. I had a couple of messages. I'm not having a pop at anyone. I'm not having a go at anyone. I'm just, I'm just clearing up, explaining a situation. Um, when I said we don't really do swathing, we don't really do this in, in the UK. When I did the swathing in, in, the, in the live, I said to people, are we going to swath this crop or not? Um... And a few people message me and say, we, of course we do swathing in the UK. Um, when farmers are harvesting their crops, you get the swath come out the back of the harvester. Um, and sometimes they'll cut grass and they'll ted it. And then they'll use a like a hay bob sort of thing to turn the swath over. Right. There's a difference between swathing that I did on here, crop swathing, and swathing. Um, because... And you can, you can see some up there just silhouetted on the skyline, but there's an absolute load... Which, yeah, there's a whole load of hay bales, uh, hay bales, straw bales out here. So we've got the requisite materials for making total mixed ration, which we're going to need. Because at some point we have to do um, a cow cattle rescue, um, which we'll get to later on. But yeah, while we're heading back, I'll keep the torch on so I don't fall over a bale on the way back. Um, anything that creates a swath, a row of whatever it is, whether it's straw, grass, hay, whatever it might be, or crop, um, a windrower creates a swath. Um... But swathing is considered to be something slightly different. Crop swathing is something different. So crop swathing, as I said in the last episode, is when you use a swather and that cuts the entire crop down, puts it into a swath, and then you come along with a, uh, a harvesting header, which picks up that swath, takes the whole lot in, um, and it's supposed to reduce the amount of stuff you lose off of the because when a regular header can hit the crop can send stuff flying and that kind of stuff swathing's supposed to improve yield because of the way the process works in, in in the uk as far as swathing goes yeah we we use wind rowers we swath hay grass straw but that's not crop swathing it's a it's a different thing and again i'm not saying we don't do crop swathing in the uk i haven't seen it but the examples that a few people messaged me and said that we do in the UK is creating swaths with something else. There, there are various different mowers. Um, it's, again, in America, it's a bigger thing where you've got a, um, a specific swather, which can be used for mowing. You can cut grass because a lot of people said I should be using the swather for doing the alfalfa. So the alfalfa, it will cut that grass. It will put it into a swath. That's a little bit different to whole crop swathing. That I just wanted to just clear that up because a few people were asking me, a few people messaged me, asked me why I was doing it, what I was doing, and um, and then a few people telling me that I was wrong about the. And you know, like I say, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I've never seen whole crop swathing, like crothing wheat, swathing wheat, or or oats or barley or anything like that. Yeah, we do grass. Yeah, we do straw that's already come out of something, um, those kind of things. But um, sorry, I just thought I'd say. Am I going to? No. No. I'm back at the store. Job's done. Fertilising is done. Um, I, barely, I barely used any. There was a 5,000 litre pallet, and I've just dropped off at the farm out of that fertiliser spreader. 4,700 litres? That's mad. That was a massive field. Spooky moon, isn't it? For you just 
yeah, Halloween just adds <laughs> adds frightening, scary words to anything. It's a spooky moon, is it? Uh, anyway, I'm at the store because what I want to do, uh, I'm going to buy the equipment now, but I'll show you it in the morning. Um, because I want to get a bucket on, I want to get that, that stuff put into the silage clamp and it covered um, now. Because otherwise if I do it in the morning, then I've wasted the entire night when it could have already been starting to ferment. So I think I probably I want to get on with that now. So I'm going to go into the store menu um, from here. Uh, and what we're going to do is, like I said, I've used these before. I had a few options, but as far as cheap, there was another one that's even cheaper. It's only 10 grand, but for 25 grand, we can pick this one up. I think it works out about 28 for the options I want. Um, we've got skid steer loader or front loader options on this. I think I'm going to stick with skid steer because this does come. Does this come with some bits? I think it does. Um, and I'll have a look in the CSZ pad to see if there's an adapter. But anyway, that being said, I was going to change the tyres, I think, to... I might go with those. We'll start off with those, see how we go. Uh, I want to go with the, the roll cage sunshade, but we're going to go Massive Ferguson red, and I'm going to go grey on the tyres. Don't want a licence plate. That's 28,400. So we'll buy that. We're going to need some equipment to go with it. Oh, that's something I need to do. Hang on a minute. Old ye horses. Let's um, complete the contract. I thought that's the only thing. I need the money. There we go. 35,484. Job done. Uh, there is a bailing contract there. I think all the fields are fertilised now. Fully fertilised. So I'm not going to get any of those big fertilising contracts again. Um, but we've got our own fields to do. Our fields need ploughing. They need lime. Um... They're going to need fertilising and we've got to decide what crops we're going to put into them. I'm thinking just going massive corn. Like loads of corn maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll give it some thought. Oh no, I suppose. Mm, oh, we'll have a look. We'll have a look. I'm sure there's stuff we can do. But anyway, um, back to here. And then we want... Actually, you know, I haven't looked at used vehicles. Oh, nothing much there I need. Um, so that's that. Oh yeah, trailer. I'm going to go for a low loader, but I'm going to go for one of these, I think. Double axle, triaxle. I don't want a double axle. 12,500. It's not a bad size. We'll get some bales on that. We can move some stuff around. We can go bigger at some point, but I think to start off with, we'll go with that. What we got? I like that. That's quite cool. Lizard trailers. We'll go with that. Uh, do I want a bale rack on there? I do want a bale rack on there. Ladder ramps or standard? Um, go standard. Hitch type. Hmm. I'll go middle. Maybe there. I don't know. That'll do. Uh, main colour. I might leave it red actually. Design colour. That's for the reflectors, isn't it? I will leave that as it is. Rim colour, don't want a licence plate. Right. So that's that. We'll buy that for 16250 Well, those options were expensive. Um, and I need to leave some money now then, because I need to get two greenhouses, and they're ten grand a pop. So, yeah, we're, we're sailing pretty close to the wind. But the other thing I want to get then is um, skid to load of gear that comes with that. I want a rear weight, definitely. Do I want it that high? Go with that. Go with that. And buy that. Always like having a rear weight. We're going to want... I'm going to want... Hmm. I'm gonna have a, I'll start with the bucket. Because I, I'm going to have a think and see if I can find an attachment. Because I want to put a, like a bale grab on there. So we'll have a look and see what's available. But if we get a bucket to start off with... Then what we can do is get all this on, get it back to the farm. I'll see over there. I wanted to like say I was going to show you the pumpkins, wasn't I? Um, when it's really dark and it's pretty much there now. But I wanted to show the fact we got this. Otherwise, in the morning, just all, all of a sudden, look, I got this. So we needed some gear. We have some gear. All the gear and no idea. I'll tell what we can do as well. We can take the rest of that silage. Um, there can't be much left in that, surely. What's in that? 
Oh, 40 litres. It's more than I thought. Let's lift that up. Put that there. Strap that down. There's not a huge selection. Um, I tend to start off with skid steer loaders because they're cheap to get you going. Like I said, I could have gone front loader, I absolutely could have done, but I prefer to have a separate unit, a separate piece of kit for doing this sort of stuff. Perfect, right. back on the farm. Coming up on the farm. Turn the lights out. There we go, that's better isn't it? Look at that. Very cool. Very cool indeed. I think something we're going to have to do as we move forward as well, we need to get some floodlights in. That looks cool as well. <laughs> yeah, we need to get some floodlights, spotlighting in at the farm, I reckon. I'll show you what I mean about the fertiliser. I was, I was amazed. I, I thought we were going to use way more than we did. Yeah, look. One, two, three, four. They're 4,720. So we used 280 litres. That was all to do that entire field. That's crazy. So I've only got one end of this camp to sort out, and then I'll see you in the morning. Um, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to show me moving all the bales. Just some of them. We'll get them loaded onto this trailer. We'll get them bought up. I've got, you know, and again, I could use an auto load trailer. I could use an auto stack trailer. Um, I've been watching, like I, said, I, I know I keep saying it, I've been watching a lot of Joe Seals, and what I'm really liking is watching them moving bales around the yards, all their bale handling, and all the stuff they're doing. And I like that. I like doing it myself, but I like the idea of it that it's. You know, yeah, we tend to, like, like what I'm doing on court farms as well, we tend to rush to, let's automate everything, let's go massive, let's go faster, let's... And there's something very honest and very normal about a farm just running with the gear it's got. Yes, it's nice to improve, yes, it's nice to get bigger and better equipment, but if you haven't got that ability, you run with what you got. You run what you brung, you know? No problem, I haven't got I am going to have is that's going to need to be compacted and then to get back onto the clamp pushes more out again. So the other thing as well, um, when we do um, corn silage, when we're whole cropping corn, that's something the Pembertons have been looking at and Joe Seals Farm have done. Uh, they've got their silage clamps and they've said they used to whole crop wheat and stuff like that um, and they did what they call maize silage now. And the maize silage is fantastic when you see them with their um, their clamp grabs and stuff and they're, and they're getting the maize silage out to put in for their total mix ration. You can see the, the corn in amongst it all, all the corn kernels and stuff. It's, it's very, very different to a standard silage crop. I still think we should have total mix ration in game that takes in more than just silage hay, straw if you want to add it in a mineral feed. Mineral feed was a good addition, I, I get that, but we should have things like fodder beet and the potential to maybe put some, some sugar beet in with it or something in addition to and maybe have a difference between normal silage and maize silage. So you can use either, but if you do a clamp of maize silage it looks, you know, I don't know, just little extras that stand out a bit. Oh, I might not get anything. Oh, okay, I need to have... That on. 
Yeah, we're now at 99%. If I drive onto that, I squash them out the front. That doesn't even want to get on there. How can we be stuck? We've literally just driven on it. There we go. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to cover this. I mean, at the end of the day, it'll be covered. I'm going to scoop a load more from the, from here and go in a little bit with it. So I'll give myself a little bit of a buffer. There we go. I am heading back to the yard. It's the following day. Well, into a new month, technically. Halloween went well. We had a few people come round. Not many. I'm going to go and get water first. I've leased this. This is one of the ones from the map. Um, this will take propane as well. So we might get into doing some propane deliveries. We'll be able to see the bales a little bit better now. Um, the stuff I leased is down there. I've, I got um, from the CSZ pack. I've got a skid steer to front loader tool adapter. And from the CSZ pack, I've got um, a round bale grab. I've also bought a bale fork. I've leased those, but I've bought a bale spike that will go on the um, skid steer loader. Actually, that's a point. Let's double check. Uh, our cornfield. Oh, no. No, not yet. I've got two harvest contracts that we might do on one of our lives, I think. But we've got this water cook, um, pond up here, which I'm assuming we can use. If not, we can put a standpipe in or something like that. We've done that before. So I'm going to put the two greenhouses in, get those running for pumpkins. Then I've got all the, the bale collecting to do. Interesting if this doesn't allow us to pick up and collect water because the ponds on our land that's very strange. Have I got to get it all the way into it? Or it's not liking that at all. Still nothing. There we go. We're feet wet, it's not charging us, that's alright. 8,000 litres. And we'll choose where we're going to put these greenhouses. It's going to leave me with 2,579. I have taken on that bailing contract that popped up. Borrowed equipment as well. Uh, for 16 grand. Because we, we're going to need to make some money. But hopefully the pumpkins will make a little bit. We have got all the crop. We've got all of the um, wheat off of the field. That's all in the silo. That's all stored away. Um, I didn't say how much we had in the end, did I? Uh, how much did we have in the end? 55,962 litres. So we could sell that. We could, you know, if we're going to just do, let's buy, uh, let's, let's produce, let's sell, produce, let's sell. We could sort of go, say, old school farming, but farming, you know. We don't own any production chains yet. We haven't got enough money to buy production chains yet. So I'm thinking greenhouses. Do I want them at the back section out here? Or do I want them in this middle section here, maybe? Just trying to think of where they're going to fit in sort of nicely. Or do we want them down at the front here? So you can kind of see them from the road sort of thing maybe. I might put them in here. On this flat section here. Yeah, we're going to put them in here. Greenhouses are in. Turns out the ground wasn't as level as I thought it was. Or if it was level, for some reason it's, it's put them down quite deep. Um... I've done a little bit of smoothing out, but it doesn't matter. We'll get the. Um, I must go back and get some more water. So that'd be another cool crop to have, wouldn't it? I know we can do a lot of these things in greenhouses, but pumpkins, that'd be pretty cool. So, let's go pumpkin. I can top these up as well at some point, which is fine. 
So I've got 8,000 in. I'll go back and get another 8,000 to get the other one going. So we'll get those topped up. And we'll be able to have a better look now across the fields at the uh, the bale situation. I've got a small skid still loader. I've got a lot of bales. A fairly small trailer, as you can see. That's all. I've got a few. I've bought two over. Um, silage bales. I've got a few silage bales around the outside. Alfalfa hay and straw. Um, I'm probably going to store it all over by the side of the shed there. So if we are going to do tail mix ration, everything's sort of... I, mean, I suppose I should really put them all here. That would make more sense, right by the silage clamp. That way um, we could probably do with a shed or a shelter or something to the side of this and store the straw and hay under a shelter next to this. So if we're then making top mix ration, we've got our silage and the rest of the products we need for making TMR right here. That would make more sense having them all over there. So I probably need to bring that pile back. That's just normal hay, but um, yeah, maybe we should do that. Turn the engine off for that a minute. So yeah, we've got um, adapter, skid steer to front loader. That's a front loader tool. Um, turn that on, turn that on. We can open that up. I think we can close it manually like that to grab our bales two at a time. This will auto load. Now the only problem we've got as well is that the baler put the bales out that way around. So I thought, oh brilliant, we can grab around, bale grab. Um, but unfortunately they're the wrong way around. Which is a bit of a pain. Which I, I mean I could still probably if I get on the edge like that. If I close that is that gonna grab it? Nope. So this isn't gonna work then. Doesn't like it at all. I don't know if it's designed more to be done with um, the auto load function. I mean, they need to be up the other way. If it was up the other way, where's one that fell on its side? There we go. I'm probably better off just using the bow spikes. I thought I'd be able to do two at a time with this, and I can stack them two, two at a time on the trailer, then unload them at the other end. And this might not work either, actually. Like I said, I think it's probably. Yeah, it doesn't like them, does it? It's not, um... Yeah, if I put this one on um, operating now, and open that up... Oh. There we go. Yeah, so it'll do that. We, we can kind of simulate closing that around it, but... It's not really what I was intending to do. I wanted to do these manually. I mean, it's, I mean, even doing it like this, we're only doing two at a time. It's still going to take absolutely ages to load the trailer up and then take them off at the other end. So I guess... I think I need different tyres on this. I went for these tyres, I thought they'd work all right, but I'm not sure they do. Halfway, probably about halfway there, aren't we? Is that going to stay on there though? Strap, strap. I think I have to keep moving the trailer as well because otherwise we're going to be driving a long way. I think I'm going to take this to the toolbox and change the tyres. Another good reason for having that, that weight on the back of this because if you are moving bales around, a couple of bales on that with the normal skid to load that would be tipping by now. We've got a lot of bales to move. I'm not sure we can get all them done in this episode. <laughs> there might have to be some off-camera work, I think. 
I mean, I guess if I am going to stack them all by the side of the silage clamp, to be fair, it would take a bit of time. Rather than loading them onto a trailer, I could, if I wanted to. Um, I could just drive backwards and forwards and do two at a time and put them by the side, like I have done on that side. It's a lot of driving, it's a lot of backwards and forwards. But like I said, if you choose whichever way you want to do it. If you if you want to use an, an auto load trailer, if you want to use an auto stack trailer, if you haven't got time for going around and collecting up bales like this, if you run yours so that when you're baling you're picking them up at the same time, there's the ultimate baling package that allows for all that. There are so many different ways you can do this. It's in, honestly, it's entirely up to you. What I am going to do, just for my own, um, and like I said, I've said many times before probably, the other way of doing it is to get an auto load trailer and do that split between manual and auto loading where you pick them up manually, take them to an auto load trailer and it takes them off of you and stacks them neatly. So if, if stacking them neatly on a trailer is not your thing, you can still kind of do a, a semi-manual loading job, you know? Definitely changing the size. I'm probably doing it with one of these because this is the one that comes with it. Is um, stacking two of these up is a little bit harder. I love doing this sort of thing though. If I was loading the trailer up this way, I would have put the ramps up and I'd be putting them between if I was doing them that way around. If we can do some one way and some another, it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. We can do it like that. Let's start that, do that. Engine off. level I thought it was there that's better oh happy day Loving it. I'll see in a little while when I've got some more on here.
exactly 7.23. Hay bales are also, they're all off the field, kind of off the field. For some people doing this, doing the way I'm doing it would be a nightmare. It follows, it follows the Halloween theme. For some of you, what you've just watched was probably a horror show. I couldn't work out how I'd earned some money. I, could, I, was, I was puzzled. Um, turns out the pumpkins I didn't even pay the slightest bit of attention to. Uh, one of the sets of pumpkins earns you money. So if you leave them out, you, um, you earn a bit of money. I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, but anyway, so I did a couple more stacks. Well, I did all those actually. But a couple of stacks, because on my trailer I had the two stacks I first did. Then I put the rest of the bells on this way, including a stack up on the top. Uh, and then what I did was I did two more stacks, bought them out here and put them on the end so when I unloaded these ones didn't roll away they kind of acted like bookends really and then we got those left on there so that's all our alfalfa bales I won't put you through the the, um, <laughs> the horror show of me doing all the straw bales but I'll get the straw bales off um, and we'll get those tucked in the side there so like I say we'll have all of our materials I might move those over. I'm not sure. Oh, that's what... Did I check this in the last episode or not? I was going to say, if we look at these... Yeah, it, it shows that it will take alfalfa grass and alfalfa hay. So if we're going to make total mix ration, we can use the alfalfa hay bales with our feed mixer um, to make total mix ration. That shouldn't be a problem. I think. Uh, I've done a couple of runs with the water. This should be the last one. I think. Each one holds 20,000. So it should just be the last one on the far. I think the other one's full. And he says, why is that not? Oh, maybe it was this one. I thought I'd filled that up. a big old unit to be just doing water in it. Why? Um, maybe it was this one then. Oh, okay. Maybe I did fill this. How are we looking? Yeah, 20,000. That one is full. Okay. So that one started off... Oh, they, oh is it because I just put water in? I was going to say, they were orange a minute ago. They were fine. It's just because I'm putting more water in. But, let's get our second lot growing. That should have 20,000 in, or just under 9968. Nothing left in there. So we did lease, I didn't buy this um, water tank, we just leased it. I'm happy with that, we got the jobs done we need to do. The fertiliser spreading got done. Greenhouses in, pumpkins on the go. We put pumpkins out for Halloween. Got the hay bales off the field. Um, and like I say, just straw to go now, so I've, what I've, oh, I need to bring the skids loader up, don't I? I need to bring the skids loader up so I can unload those bales. So I'll bring the skids loader up, we'll unload these bales next to these. What I'll probably do, because they'll be on the floor then, um, that one on its own, I'll just stick on the top of one of these, so we haven't got one out on its own. Then all the straw bales next to it. I was trying to think, we had... What was that pack that came out the other day? I don't know if, they, if they'll work this low. Um, that gave you the ability to put shed roofs. And we've got them already. Um, it was one of the shelter packs that came out, I mean, pretty much as soon as Carmsden Farm came out. Because I used one on Carmsden Farm. Um, but it was, was it the old sheds? Old, something like that, wasn't it? That came out the other day. So I'm thinking we might be able to put some covers attached to the side of the silage clamp, maybe? I'll have a look. We're going to need some more money to do that. Um, so we'll just keep on with uh, what we're doing. I'm going to go and get the skid steer loader. Bring that back over. And that's it for the Halloween episode. I mean, it was work I needed to do. So I thought, you know what? I was going to do the, the greenhouses anyway. So it just worked out nicely with the pumpkins. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.